A GOP candidate is a predator, put up his picture full mass. That's the allegation. Now let me give you some background. This is a South Dakota House candidate who lost his race, appeared in court this Tuesday on a charge of second degree sexual assault. Bud Marty, that's his name, Bud Marty May, 37, faces 50 years in prison over the class one felony charge. His bond was set at $7,500 with a no contact order regarding the victim. His preliminary hearing is set for November 30th at 1130 AM. Let me give you a background on the attack alleged against him. According to the victim, Mr. May forced himself on her in a bathroom stall at a bar, telling her, and I quote, I am six foot eight white. It is all consensual. May then fled the scene, but was later detained by the police. The Republican candidate initially denied involvement, but then claimed it was simply a hug. Just days before Bud ran for one of the two South Dakota seats against his mother, Elizabeth May. The seats were won by Perry Purrier, a Democrat with 29% of the vote, and his mother, Elizabeth May, Republican with 26% of the vote. But Bud finished last, okay? He finished last. Now, obviously, heinous crime here. The allegation is extreme. And horrific. But think about it in context of where we are in the political arena. He goes to a woman, according to her account, and I believe her, and he physically violates her, sexually violates her, and then provides an excuse as to why. Well, Donald Trump said that was okay. Donald Trump says he just grabs women by the you know what. And because he's famous or a celebrity or got money, they let him do it according to him. Now remember, this guy admitted, Trump admitted to sexual assault and then got elected president. But he's not the first one and unfortunately will not be the last. This is the element of rape culture we talk about in the United States of America, where somehow people that engage in this kind of assault against women, they are typically treated in a way that's not appropriate to the actual crime. They're given lighter sentences, a pass, oh, it's just locker room talk. And here's the new one, he's tall, white, and it must be consensual. Isn't that something? All right, we're gonna continue to follow this. Jordan, thoughts here. Oh, folks are lucky that he didn't win his election, but I was looking at the results. He missed third place by two votes. Yeah. So he didn't do extremely poorly despite uh, seems to be uh, obviously that he's a lunatic. Uh, what this underscores is how Trump has inspired just some of the worst people, not just to express their worst views or act out in their worst behavior patterns, but also to run for office. That part's scary. We're like, that's going to be a long term effect of just Trump being a major political player that we're going to see play out over the next few to several years. And now with Trump running, running again, I think those same people who might have taken a step back after 2020 and especially January 6th. I think some people, it may may have gotten a little too real for them. I think they ultimately like it, but they're a little bit more reserved. But they're gonna be back and they're gonna be more emboldened. They're gonna be more outspoken with their bigotry, their hate, their racism, their xenophobia, their transphobia. They're going to feel empowered again and that's really unfortunate. So I know people watching the show are going to fight back against Trump's run, but ultimately DeSantis too will try to cater to the same people. It's gonna be a race to the bottom when we all lose. Well said.